Okay, everyone, um, thanks for tuning in. And this is going to be a quick breakdown just for patrons of the channel. I'm going to talk a little bit about the instruments that I use and how I use the looper to create some of the live looping stuff and our contest that we're having. So I'm using the Zenco, which is right here. And um, I've got it, I've got the mic right here, so it's kind of close uh, to balance the sound. And I'm playing with these little steel drum mallets. I'm not playing with um, bigger mallets because I just wanted the sound to be very round and gentle, not too clunky. I didn't want a lot of impact sound. So these mallets work fine. There's lots of types of mallets you can use um, for that. I'm using also a little cricket or a grasshopper. I don't know if it's a cricket or a grasshopper. I guess it's a cricket because it makes the cricket sound. So I'm using that, try to play very uh, gently because this, in relationship to the Zenko and some of the other instruments, it's pretty loud. I try to move away from the mic. Same with the Kashishi uh, basket shaker. A lot louder than some of these other instruments. Um, but try to use that. And every track over here, and I don't know how much you can see, you can't see the whole thing in the overhead. Let me move this. And yeah, I'm gonna move this over here. So you can see, there we go. Um, every every track in here is assigned uh, somewhere in the mix. Oh, and then I'm also using triangle, of course, with a little beater. And then I use the uh, the uh, cajon tab, laptop cajon, which you can't see in the overhead, but that's that one. Um, so getting back to the looper real quick, I what, the way I work this is I assigned um, middle. This is the middle of the mix. The the third track and um, so I recorded the Zenko on that because I wanted it in center so that's there and then I put the percussion towards the outside and these two go a little bit out in the mix so the wood block and the cajon and then on the edges I put the triangle and the kashishi so you can hear, if you're listening in a stereo environment, either speakers or headphones, you can hear that, uh, that those are panned. And then also I have two types of reverb accessible over here in A and B. Uh, B is the shorter reverb. I'm just going to leave this up so you can kind of hear the difference. So B is what I use for recording all the instrument parts. Hello? Yeah, so that's, okay, there we go. So that's a small room. It just gives the sounds a little a little more spaciousness as opposed to super dry. Okay, so that's what's happening with B. And then A is for, whoo, hello, okay. A is for if I wanna get a lot of what we call tail uh, on the reverb. canyon type sound uh, for the native flute and for my voice. So I'm pressing these buttons. These buttons just engage the reverb and then this knob controls how much of it is in the mix. So if we start here, we have none, even though it's engaged and then I can bring it up, 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 up. Oh my God. And then it gets uh, pretty overpowered pretty overpowering. And one of the things you want to remember about reverb is reverb is a form of, of noise. It's a form of distortion, basically. You know, it's to emulate echoing and, and space, but you, you can overdo it. And then the, the whole mix kind of can suffer because things get too um, muddy. So you want to use your reverb. There's lots of tutorials you can find online about how to use reverb, how to dial it in, whether you're adding reverb to which frequencies of a sound. You don't necessarily need reverb in the low end. So sometimes you can put a, a shelf filter and filter out the low sounds of a sound, like one sound, filter out the lows and just put reverb on the high sounds. And that way you get the reverb effect without getting the muddiness of uh, putting a lot of reverb on the low sounds, which tends to, you know, associate with just rumbling noise. All right, so, and then I have the whole mix here. So here's all my percussion, and then the Zenko. And I can mix it with these 
sliders. You know, so and then I can start also start and stop. So uh, if I if I'm playing a track and I hit the play button again, just on this particular unit, if you set it up like this, I can add to the recording. So I just added some snaps to the cajon track. That's a little bit, I'm not gonna do a whole big tutorial on looping right now, but I decided to share a little bit about uh, what I'm doing here. Of course, I have the mic going into the mic input and then outputs are going to my zoom recorder. And um, on the looper itself, I'm hearing a click. I've got a click over here, which you can't hear. If I, I can turn it on though, so you can hear it. Um, line out so if I turn that now you should yeah you should be able to hear the what I'm hearing so I'm listening to this two three four and it gives me that one two three four with the little ding on the number one um, turn that off okay so that's a little secret um, so I'm hearing the click but on the output you can control uh, what uh, your audience hears or what you want to record. So I'm listening to the looper out of the headphones out and then I have the line outs going to my audio recorder and in the headphone out I have the click and in the line outs I don't. So there you go. All right, so that's it for this one. Thanks for being a patron. Uh, good luck on this contest and future contests and I'll see you in a future video. Thanks for watching.